So now in this video, I, uh, I'm going to make a current source. So we're going to get about 10 milliamps of current regardless of the load here. So we have uh, 5 volts there. This is a uh, red LED. Make sure I put it in the right way. So long lead, the anode, needs to uh, go towards the positive supply. Short lead, the cathode, needs to go to the negative supply. And uh, there you can see, we have about 10 milliamps of current flowing through it. A little bit of current is flowing through this LED, but hardly any. Um, the vast majority of the current you see there is uh, the red LED. So blue LEDs drop more voltage than red LEDs, so the current is expected to go down a little bit more. But uh, being a current source, there we have you know a set amount of current that's going to flow through the uh, blue LED. Um, we're not really worried about the current here. It's uh, pretty insignificant other than helping to set uh, the current. Uh, so we got the uh, blue LED. I can even take a green LED now and uh, put it in series with the blue LED. Uh, so with the 5 volts, that's actually dropping more than uh, 5 volts. Um, so there we go. We'll put that in series there. And uh, um, so 5 volts isn't enough to power this. That's the problem there. We actually have to step up, since it's a green LED, it drops about 3 volts. We will step up the voltage, about 3 volts right there. So we change things quite a bit uh, right there. And uh, there you can see, it's a pretty much 10 milliamps of current. Probably changed just slightly, um, for probably a couple of reasons. Um, but for the most part, it's about 10 milliamps of current right there. We have approximately 10 milliamp uh, current source circuit, and uh, that'll be to blinding. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to set the power supply back to 5 volts. So now we come to uh, the schematic diagram that I uh, drew a while ago. Um, I'm just reusing this. I flipped through and thought this would be a good time to make another video on this. So we have a, a PNP bipolar junction transistor here. I'm using the 2N3906, a very common one that uh, people have. And uh, LEDs are very common too. That's another reason why I make... Uh, uh, circuits like this they're doing something interesting um, you probably wouldn't wire this up uh, exactly this way if you need a 10 milliamp current source but it does work so you know if you don't want to buy any more components you could do this to get a 10 milliamp uh, current source we have uh, now as I said before the LED the PNP bipolar junction transistor you can see we have a resistor on the emitter side that's important right there so Whatever uh, voltage we give to the base will be transferred to the emitter when you have uh, resistance. And uh, that voltage will build up across the resistance and um, it'll maintain about that voltage. So with the red LED that we got there, so long lead the anode to the positive supply. This is the shorter lead right there, the uh, cathode coming to the base and that resistor. And by the way, it's not lit right now because uh, current can flow through emitter to base right there. Um, so it's not setting the voltage at the uh, moment. There's uh, no load. You'll see if I put a, a red LED here and uh, then I take uh, this jumper. I was gonna use a multimeter when I first wired this but we already saw the current on the uh, on the uh, power supply. But uh, yeah, there you can see. Uh, we connect that. Uh, you can see the faint glow right there of uh, that one right there. So now current's flowing through it right there. Whereas when I yank this, uh, current can't flow through there. So the current wants to go there, has an easier path through that 10K resistor. And uh, thus, there's no reason for current to flow through that uh, LED. It's dropping too much voltage. But in uh, any case, we have the flat side to the left right there, PMP bipolar junction transistor. And uh, there's different transistors have different pin layouts. But if it starts with 2N, it's a PMP bipolar junction transistor then probably the right pin will be collector, now it's at the bottom. Middle pin base, and then the left pin, which is the top there, is the emitter. And uh, so, we have the emitter to base. It uh, drops about 0.7 uh, volts. And um, so, this will actually be about 0.7 volts higher than this point right there. We have five volts there. This is dropping about 1.7 right there. So, it'll be, about 3.3 uh, .3 volts approximately at this point. And then it's uh, gonna be about 0.7, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, it's not exact. Um, this might be 1.6 and this might be, you know, a drop in 0 0.6. But either way, it comes out to where this will be about uh, one volt across here. And then you add about 0.7 volts, then it'll be 1.7 between those two points. And then you can see 1.7, that's what it will set. And it transfers the voltage there. 
and uh, ultimately you hold about one volt across the resistance when you have an emitter resistor. If you're using a 100 ohm resistor right there, then that's one volt divided by 100 ohms equals uh, 0 0.01 amps, which is the same as 10 milliamps right there. So it's not as that current, but uh, you know, not bad. And it holds steady even as you change the supply voltage as we saw before. Um, you know, as long as you don't overheat anything, that's the uh, main uh, problem. Uh, but in any case, yeah, 10 milli or 10,000 ohms of resistance right here. That helps keep the current through the LED low. And uh, so we got a relatively low forward voltage. Red LEDs actually have about a two volt forward voltage, but that's probably closer to like 10 milliamps of current. This is gonna keep the current through the red LED, you know, relatively low. Um, so we could measure uh, those voltages, but uh, uh, not going to right now, maybe later in the video. But uh, we will come over here and uh, here you can see you add an LED and again, you'll still have about 10 milliamps current. The blue LED though, drops about uh, three volts approximately. We have about, about a volt being dropped there, and then the emitter to base part of it is dropping about uh, point, you know, 6.7 volt or whatever. That's getting close to five volts. Um, you can't exceed the uh, supply voltage. Otherwise, um, uh, you know, can't provide that voltage and current's gonna go down. Um, so when I added that green LED, you saw it didn't even like light them. It wanted, you know, close to eight volts, five volts couldn't provide that. The two LEDs by themselves wanted like six volts. And uh, so we bumped up like three more volts and uh, that was able to uh, power everything. So uh, for those of you still finding this uh, interesting, we will uh, take multimeter measurements. So first we will go to uh, milliamps right there and uh, we got uh, five volts at the supply. And when I get this going, you'll see, then current will start going through uh, the red LED. Ooh, that's microamps. Um, we may have been able to blow a fuse there, but I don't think I did that long enough. There we go, milliamps. Definitely make sure you have the right setting when you got current. So uh, there we go, once I got it steady, it does look like we're closer to uh, 11 milliamps uh, right there. We we're on the edge, but the power supply says uh, 10 right now. So we will just go with the uh, blue LED right here. Um, not the red one, should be about the same current. And uh, that's why I had this jumper there. Um, once I get a good uh, connection. Should be, uh, I don't know why we have less current right now. We got five volts. This is uh, really bad. I'm gonna try moving this to a different spot right there. As we saw before, we did have 10 milliamps. Uh, before, there it is, yeah. It was just uh, a bad spot right there. So yeah, just uh, slightly below 11 uh, milliamps of current. Now, of course, when I put the green one, as I said before, we won't have enough uh, voltage to uh, light uh, the two of them. That is the main problem. So I'm gonna set the power supply to uh, eight volts. I already showed uh, that, not going to uh, move the camera to display it. And now we should have, again, there you can see. So it changed a little bit, went up slightly, but uh, we kind of expect that um, because we're, we're working with more voltage. Um, but it, it barely moved. Uh, we changed the load a lot, changed the power supply by quite a bit. And um, we saw that, uh, you know, it's basically the same. So now let's get uh, the, uh, uh, let's just do the jumper, or uh, the jumper, this would be a cable right here. No, the cable would be the uh, fixed one. This is a jumper wire right there. Let's do the uh, jumper wire. So we have uh, the wire connected. So we, the voltages we were interested in was uh, the voltage at uh, the LED. So I can go anywhere that connects the ground. Looks like that's the uh, best spot. And uh, we'll go to the base of the transistor. And uh, there you can see, about uh, 6.12. Um, but that should be about approximately 1.7 volts less. So yeah, we're up to about 1.8. And it might be because we had that uh, higher voltage. But the main thing is that uh, uh, that should be the voltage across the resistor there. So um, should be about one volt approximately across the resistor. There you can see uh, 1.12 right there. And uh, now we will pluck that jumper, uh, get rid of the green LED. And it's really hard for me to see right now. I'm dropping the supply voltage to uh, five volts. And uh, now we'll uh, connect the jumper to the blue LED. And uh, there we go. So we got uh, 
5 volts now we can look at that right there back to uh, 5 volts and uh, so below this point should be you know like uh, about uh, it looks like we're at about 1.8 volts less than 5 volts right there that's what that is saying we could uh, look at the actual voltage here in relationship to ground uh, but in any case um, that means we're probably gonna have about 1.1 uh, uh, maybe 1.2 volts across the resistor again and ultimately that's what is setting the current so yeah I think it went down a little bit but not by a ton we're holding the vent, uh, voltage pretty steady across the resistor which ultimately is setting the current um, we got that voltage across the resistor the rest of the supply voltage is uh, going across the transistor and uh, the load right there so we should have you know uh, going um, up uh, yeah here you know like four volts approximately you know not perfect right there but there you can see that so um any case yeah um this is you know like a pretty effective way to get about 10 milliamps of current if uh you don't have the other means you know there's more reliable 10 milliamps of current than everything um you probably won't see this in a practical circuit but it does work um so you already have the components and uh, you don't want to buy more components or whatever um you could just do this as a quick way if you need approximately 10 looks like we're getting closer to 11 milliamps but again um, if approximate is good enough, you know, it's good enough. Uh, go with uh, approximate circuit. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next one.